So, as far as this lecture series has been concerned, we've gone through several different examples of when things don't follow Mendel's laws. Things like sex chromosomes and linkage patterns always sort of make things look a little weird and non-Mendelian. We're going to continue along that path now that we've established the idea of linkage, the idea of complete linkage, and um, non-linked things, unlinked genes. We're now going to look at the intermediate of those. We're going to look at that by entitling this next flowchart, Incomplete Linkage. Again, this is a non-Mendelian uh, sort of theme here of linkage. So we can have complete linkage. Remember how I kept on sort of putting complete between uh, any time I said linkage? Now I'm going to show you what incomplete linkage is. This is something that is literally, and I'm just going to write this for the purposes of making it very clear, something that is the linkage that is in between unlinked and completely linked. Two things we've already established. Unlinked plus, I'll just say, completely linked. It is an intermediate of those two. Let me give you an example. I think it's very good to run through this example because it's a very important one that I believe Thomas Hunt Morgan himself studied. So, if we look at fruit flies, fruit flies have uh, body colors and they also have wings. So let's look at um, fruit flies, just like uh, Thomas Hunt Morgan did. So if we look at fruit fly, it has different body colors, possibilities, and also we'll write their wings. We're going to examine both as an example, body colors and wings. In terms of body color, we're going to establish the following. So let's write this down, body color. If we have a body color of B with a plus sign, do you remember what that plus sign means? That refers to wild type, the one that is most seen in nature. This will give us a body type color of gray. And that is our wild type color, our normal color, let's say. And if we have a body color of B, just B without the plus sign, this gives us a body color of black, what is the opposite of wild type? That will be a mutant allele, a non, let's say, majority allele. And then fruit flies also have wings. And wings can be of two forms, just like body color. Wings can be either, we'll call it VG+. Plus. This, this just means one thing. Don't get confused because there are two alleles now. There are not two alleles. VG just stands for vestigial, okay? VG plus versus just regular old VG. VG plus means that you have normal wings, okay? Nothing crazy here. You have normal wings and thus you are wild type. But sometimes fruit flies can get VG wings. And these are wings that are abnormally short. And thus they are the wings that are the mutant wings. So those are our body color and wing examples. Let's keep those in mind because what I'm going to be doing is a dihybrid test cross. Look how important dihybrid test crosses is. Dihybrid test crosses are. They show up again and again and again. So we're going to do one utilizing the information we've just established. It will be the following. I'm going to do a dihybrid test cross of a heterozygous individual, and that will be of this genotype heterozygous fly right here. You should know why this is a heterozygous fly. And I'm going to cross it with a completely, remember this is a test cross, a completely homozygous individual. So there we go. Let's remember, I, how many alleles am I crossing right now? I'm crossing one, the B allele, and two, the VG allele. V and G are not two separate things. They're combined together, okay? And that does not mean they're linked. It's just a denotion. Okay, it's just a way to denote vestigial. The word vestigial is best denoted by VG because V was probably already taken, so we just put VG instead. So we have B plus and B, that's the part, first part of our dihybrid. Then we have VG plus and VG, that's the second part of our dihybrid. And then we have the same or a little bit different situation in our uh, other parent. Let's look at the offspring. In this situation, the offspring, it's always about the offspring in these genetic scenarios because the offspring tell you all. I'm going to tell you that what we end up with are the following results. We end up with B plus B and VG plus VG. Remember, what does that look like already to you? That looks like a parental. That looks like a parental because it's exactly the same as one of the parents. That's a parental offspring. 
a parental genotype specifically. I'll tell you that about 40% of the offspring in this situation, because remember, when flies mate, one mating uh, session leads to hundreds of different individuals. So about 40 out of the 100 end up looking like a parent. Thus, they are parental, I'll say. Very similar to the parental genotype, exactly the same as the parental genotype. I'm also going to tell you that some of them will also end up like this. That is also parental, and you should be able to see why very clearly, so I'm going to write that down as parental, just like I did before. This line is just to push it to the side. And then I also end up with some intermediates in which I have the following. This genotype, about 10% of it, will be that genotype. And that is a recombinant genotype. You should be understanding why it's recombinant. So I'll write recombinant. And I also end up with this genotype. This is another recombinant genotype, about 10%. This is another recombinant. So for the first time, we're seeing weird percentages. We're seeing 40, 10, 10, and 10. We're seeing these percentages because automatically when you see things like this, you have to understand that these uh, alleles are showing incomplete linkage. This shows incomplete linkage. It's as simple as that. If you're not 100% offspring that are parental, and if you're not 50-50 ratio, if you're in between, just like stated here, you are going to show incomplete linkage. More specifically, I just stated this, but I want to write it down. If you're not 100% parental, just like I stated, I want to just make it very clear by writing it down. And if you're not 50-50, in terms of your percentage of parental to offspring, you are, of course, not completely linked. So I'll write not COM linked, nor are you unlinked, not unlinked, but instead you are incomplete. But let's not remember, let's not forget, <laughs> let's not forget that incomplete still is weird. Okay, this is still not something that Mendel ever saw or predicted. Thus, it is non-Mendelian. Non, let me write that again, non-Mendelian. Fair enough. All you need to know, don't worry about how these percentages came about. Just notice that these percentages are not 100 and not 50-50, and because of that, they are incomplete. They are showing incomplete linkage. And the last thing I'll state about uh, for this incomplete linkage video is that linked genes, I'm going to write this as one final point, linked genes recombine through crossing over. So we do see recombination because we have two recombinants right here, right? We do see some change from our parentals. So linked genes recom recombine through CO, meaning crossing over. And this is, of course, going to happen during prophase 1 of meiosis. Do not ever forget that crossing over happens during P1 of meiosis. But what happens is, and this is why it's, com it's not completely linked, nor is it unlinked, it's incomplete, because sometimes genes um, are, can be located far apart on what? What is that unit that carries them? On chromosomes. If they're located very, very far apart, what happens is the further that they are, the increase in probability that you have of them being separated. Doesn't that make sense? The further you are, let's say, from your parent in the uh, toy store, the greater chance you have of being separated from your parent. Same thing for genes. The greater probability of being separated, the further they are apart on the chromosome. If B plus and VG are very far apart on the chromosome, they have a bigger chance of being separated, specifically during CO, during crossing over, versus genes that are closer, versus their close gene counterparts, versus the people that stay with their parents, the kids that stay with their parents. Now, what does this mean? Well, you can actually, based off of this fact right here, you can actually determine um, linkage from this exact thing that we did from the test cross results. 
But it's important to understand that the further you are, the greater chance you have of separating. That means that you have a greater chance of establishing what? Showing complete or unlinked genes. Which one? I want you to answer that on your own. And if you're very close to each other, does that show complete linkage? Does that show incomplete linkage? Or does that show unlinked genes? That should be very clear from the past two videos that we've done. Be comfortable answering those questions. If you have any questions about it, I highly suggest posting within the site's forum so that we can have a great biological conversation on linkage patterns and results.